Good morning, families, friends, faculty, and most importantly, winter graduates. As the senior class president, it is with immense honor that I stand here today to congratulate you all during a truly momentous occasion. Graduating from William and Mary is no easy feat, and all of you should be extremely proud of the hard work and effort that you have put forward to get you here today. The past few years have likely reflected one of the most unique college experiences that William and Mary has ever known. Transitioning into college during a global pandemic is no easy feat, but you made it. And for that, you all deserve a round of applause. You have all proved to be, in my humble opinion, some of the most resilient, kind, and intelligent students this school has known. As I look across this room today, um, I see a group of individuals who have served to inspire me every single day. Your passion for this community and what you love has not been unnoticed by those around you. Each and every one of you has contributed to the William and Mary community in your own unique and special way, and for that, I and the rest of your peers are forever thankful. Whenever I encounter a starry-eyed high school student touring the college and they ask me what my favorite part of William & Mary is, my answer is always, undoubtedly, my peers. You all represent something distinctive and different that this school has never experienced before, and I know the broader world is waiting to catch a glimpse of that same feeling. As you walk across this stage today and eventually outside these doors, know that you have left behind a truly meaningful legacy. While this is a time of great celebration and joy, there is no denying that winter graduation represents a bittersweet moment. I hope you all know that the next semester at the college will not be the same without your presence, and you will all be greatly missed. The audible joy around the sunken gardens, the laughter on the Sadler Terrace in the afternoon between classes, and the muted gossip on the second floor of SWEM will all be less grand without your presence. But always remember that all of us, still here at the college, are rooting for your success. I'll end off with a phrase that I'm sure you are all too familiar with. Those who come here belong here. And while you all move on into the world, surely inspiring more and more people, just know that a part of you will always belong here. Thank you and congratulations. Hello, my name is Evan Flynn and I'm the president of Graduate Council here at William & Mary. And on behalf of Graduate Council, I'd like to welcome you and thank you all, students, family, and friends for coming this morning. Secondly, I want to congratulate every single one of our graduating students on all that you've accomplished here at William & Mary. As Grad Council President, I'm particularly proud of our graduate students in business, education, law, marine science, and the many arts and sciences programs. Whether you've been here only a short time or years and years, and years, uh, or if you've lived in Williamsburg or further away, we know that you've done the hard work, you've found lifelong friends, and made unforgettable memories along the way. We're confident that you'll do great, make, do impactful things, no matter where you end up in the world. At the same time, we hope that you know, regardless of where you do end up, that you can always come back and visit us anytime. Because no matter how you got here, you will always have a home at William & Mary. Congratulations again from everyone on Graduate Council. We're so excited for you all. And without further ado, President Rowe. Good morning, everybody. Ooh, that's very muted. Well, today's a day when you're gonna get louder and louder. It's one of my favorite days of the year. Honestly, these, this is a more than 30-year-old ceremony, went to graduation at William & Mary. We're gonna close the day with Yule Log, which goes back 100 years? 
Yeah, and both of those keep evolving in the most exciting ways. I am, I am going to say, I'm going to repeat what you heard from our two presidents, Madam President, Madam President, thank you for your wonderful words. I feel very similarly about this class of graduates. We've gone through some extraordinary years together, and what I saw, and I, I want to share this with the families, was a group of human beings who were very intentional about how to create community together under extraordinary strain. Most of the ways that we knew how to create community, we weren't, weren't, they weren't available to us for a good two years. And yet, quite powerfully, you learned how to do it. You invented how to do it. You created how to do it. And my memory of going through pandemic is going to be the delight of discovering new modes of community created by our students. Uh, I want you to just take a moment, if you would, to think, all of you, about something that you're proud of, about the way you were, the way you held yourself and created community during pandemic as you were gaining your degree. Can you do that for a second? So that, that strength, that superpower is what you're going to carry with you with your degree from this institution. Everyone on this side of the room is going to want to hear what you were just thinking about. Don't forget it. Um, it will be what you remember about the way you were during these last two and a half years. So thank you for sharing that with us and thank you for making this place what it is and can be. It's. Uh, as I said, this is an incredibly wonderful ceremony. It's got an intimacy, parents, families, friends, uh, that, that many of our other ceremonies can't because they're so large. And it's thrilling to be able to share that sense of accomplishment, of extraordinary achievement, hard-earned with all of you. We're always going to be grateful for what we learned here. We're going to carry it forward. and. We are so thrilled that we've had a chance to begin to reflect and gather and work differently, gather in fellowship in the ways that we didn't for two years. This was an incredible semester. It was the first semester in two and a half years that public health emergencies have not been our number one concern in leadership uh, and in the room. It was a semester in which we cheered on a football team during a historic season. That was so much fun. Many of you were part of that. We created an extraordinary new tradition. So the student government here at William & Mary interwove our new monument, Hearth, our memorial to the enslaved, in some very important student traditions, pledging our community values there, walking through there. And we saw the first graduating class incorporate that into the campus walk. We made some extraordinary commitments to Pell. Some of you will know that we committed for starting with uh, Pell eligible students in Virginia at minimum free tuition and fees. We want to expand that significantly. So I hope you all feel immensely proud of what you achieved here at the alma mater of the nation. You are the citizens and professionals that we need in the decades ahead. And you are going to be able to stay the course through the next headwinds that will come in a way that will guide and knit together those around you, something that you should be very proud of. You are who we need for a pluralistic democracy because democracy has to be made. It's not given to us. And I look forward to seeing what you accomplish. It's going to be so much fun. Come home to William & Mary. That's part of the message of this ceremony, too. These rooms are always here for you. This fellowship is always here for you and your families and friends. And congratulations again. Can we give them one more cheer? <laughs> uh, so now it's a real pleasure to be able to introduce our alumni speaker, Johanse Whitaker, who is a community organizer in Richmond, Virginia. And He's to blame in large part for my being here because I met him six years ago during the search process for uh, the next president, the 20th president. And it was much of what he, he conveyed about this community that made me confident that it was a place that I wanted to be. 
So, so you can either thank or blame Johanse as you wish. Uh, as a student, he served as president of the student assembly, as a president's aide, as an RA, as an officer of Alpha Phi Alpha. He was a member of the Sharp Community of Scholars program. Is that right? Yes. And a Powell Leadership Scholar and a recipient of the Benjamin Stoddard Ewell Award. He's, uh, he earned a Master of Divinity from Virginia Union University after William and Mary, and currently serves as the inaugural member and treasurer of the Crim Della Association, our LGBTQ advisory board. So uh, please join me in welcoming an extraordinary graduate and young man and leader, Johansi Whitaker. Good morning, and congratulations to the graduates and, and families. Thank you, uh, President Rowe, President Saheed, President Flynn, Vice President Ambler, and Vice President Brandon. Thank you also to the uh, families and friends who are here to celebrate the graduates. Um, you invite a community organizer to give a, uh, some remarks, and so there will be some public participation. Um, and so what we're going to do very briefly is just to learn a quick chant, and then we'll get on with the work that we have to do today. There's a new world coming. Everything's going to be turning over. Everything's going to be turning over. Where are you going to be standing when it comes? Okay? So the first line is, there's a new world coming. There's a new world coming. Everything gonna be turning over. Everything gonna be turning over. Where are you gonna be standing when it comes? Okay, now one more time like we mean it. There's a new world coming. Everything gonna be turning over. Everything gonna be turning over. Where are you gonna be standing when it comes? It was much better, thank you. <laughs> a new world is possible, and every person has a role in making it a reality. Every person has a vision of a new world and a new humanity. There is a voice that is calling out if you can only hear it. This voice grows stronger each day, and it grows and speaks of new ways of being human. Our dreams provide us with a glimpse of a brand new day. It is a morning that we have not seen before, but it rises clearer in each sunrise. This new world, new society, new humanity belongs to each of us, and it is our collective responsibility to build it together. The world is changing. The world, it is turning over. We live in a particularly revolutionary time. Mass protest movements in the United States, Haiti, Iran, and elsewhere erupt with human cries of freedom and an end to systemic violence. Locally, you are bearing witness to and participating in making all things new. You implemented, as President Rose said, the Community Values Pledge, introducing a commitment to equity and restorative practices. Members of your class launched a chapter of the Innocence Club to shed light on wrongful convictions and the racially disparate impact of mass incarceration. You watched the construction and dedication of Hearth Memorial to the Enslaved, a manifestation of student organizing efforts. You showed up in solidarity with dining workers who unionized to demand dignity and self-determination. You helped expand access to safety by walking each other home at night. And during your time on campus, you formed deep, meaningful relationships with each other in classrooms and dorms, on the terrace, and over meals. You dared to come out of isolation and doom scrolling on social media to find home in each other. 
congratulations. Your actions honored the humanity of others. In so doing, you all made a new world more tangible. We celebrate you, winter graduates, because you did all of this as you explored who you are, your purpose, and community. Today, we are living in between the new world coming into existence and the old one passing away. We, both the graduates and those assembled here today, face a succession of crises and mighty causes that call out to us, climate change, gendered violence, wealth inequality, the criminalization of trans people. They call out in voices that require our collective action. The old systems we live under, white supremacy, hate, punishment and capitalism, dishonor humanity. The conditions placed on us limit access to humanity to people who are privileged and deals death to people who we as a society devalue. The hegemonic voices tell us to adjust to a world where humanity is denied. Dominant forces and the allurement of the old world threaten to seduce us away from our own humanity, our passions, and other humans. We have an opportunity, and you took it by joining the William & Mary community. We have an opportunity to recognize that the systems we live under were created over time by humans and can be changed by humans. Our challenge then is to build toward a new world and humanity. Just one final assignment. But there's no deadline, and it's cumulative. It happens throughout our lives. Graduates and friends, we are called to be fully human, to do the work our souls must have, and build oppositional community. Every person, every person here, has the capability of discerning their own humanity and offering their unique perspective to the world. The world is changing around us, and we must find out who we are. We must cultivate the practices of enlightening the eyes of our heart so that we may perceive our own humanity and the hope of a new world. Graduates, you have some insight into who you are, who you are becoming, and your unique contributions to the human family. The rest of us are depending on you because you are the only you. We give thanks for you. There is something sacred in you, indeed, in all of us. We are all striving to be ourselves, to be fully human. It is our personal challenge to find a process that allows us to slow down from the busy rush of our lives, listen to our internal voice, ask self-reflective questions, and emerge ever closer to our humanity. The daily practice of examining ourselves and listening to our humanity is Howard Thurman's imperative to hear the sound of the genuine in you. He advised students to develop a practice of stillness, to gain awareness of their language within them. Your language invites you to be yourself, to recognize you, your unique gifts, and to know it. By way of illustration, I live near a train station and several railroad tracks. I've grown accustomed to the low rumblings of the train. At night, the city lights near my apartment emanate a sky glow, sometimes frustrating starlight. And every so often, I go into a wooded area or a rural area, and I'm amazed by the sounds of nature and the expanse of the skies above. But I can only witness them when I tune out or remove the sound and light pollution. Graduates, give yourself permission to release those internalizations that are not organic to you. Develop the practice of plunging into the depths of your own humanity and listening for your special contributions that assist in the construction of new ways of being. Be who you be. Trust the sacred in you. Secondly, we all must do our work. As we develop our internal world and humanity, then we turn outwards to the material world to transform it. 
We are co-laborers of a new world and a new humanity. We have a moral responsibility as William & Mary graduates to interrogate our beliefs and practices, both individually and collectively, to dismantle those ways that arrest human development and build systems that honor all forms of humanity. We're talking about our vocation, or as Katie Geneva Cannon said, doing the work our souls must have. We who are alumni of the College of William & Mary have tremendous privilege. Our minds have been transformed. We are gaining clarity about our contemporary moment and imagining new ways, new human possibilities. Our liberal arts education equips us with the critical thinking so that we can discern our own social analysis and ethical codes. As we leave alma mater, we will have to make decisions about where we want to practice our values, the location of our work, and how to be positive moral change agents. The dominant system of the world, the old world, values some form of human beings and devalues other modes of human being. The systems we live under were built and flourished through the exploitation of people through slavery, imperialism, and genocide. Still, some people contend that human beings or hu hum the human well-being can best be advanced by liberating individual entrepreneurial freedoms and skills within a framework characterized by private property, free markets, and free trade. We all must decide where we are standing and how we can expand access to humanity. We must rise to the challenge of working in such a way that we understand and dismantle systems that perpetuate injustice. We can put food on the table without selling our souls. Graduates, be confident in who you are, your ethical code, and your work. We must summon the courage to follow our soul's work and contribute to positive change. One of my favorite projects of William & Mary is no title needed. You don't need a title. You don't necessarily need a degree to do the work that your soul must have. You don't need a degree or a title to effect positive change. Finally, we will need to root ourselves and our work in oppositional community to increase the possibilities of building new human organization and life. And though we all have a part to play in realizing the new world and possibilities that we imagine, no one can do it alone. The world is not a city, and no man, no person is an island. The world is characterized by great populations of people living together, growing in the collective life of humanity and in our readiness to ransom our lives for others if necessary. We must work together in our communities and organizations toward a new vision and a new humanity. And you've done this throughout your college experience and career in your clubs and organizations. It's our responsibility to live out the hope for great national, global, social, political, and religious transformation. I contend that we can create, we can co-create, new possibilities through loving people, especially those who are at the bottom of society. And by love, I mean acting in concrete ways toward a common vision of new humanity and rendering ourselves to one another. When we plunge into our own souls and understand our work, then we have increased our capacity to see another's soul into existence and honor the work their souls must have. We need to be open to learning from people on the corner, those whose society has left behind, and consider their imaginations and survival tools. We cannot afford to dogmatically adhere to ancient creeds and outworn principles. We must talk to people even when we disagree with them. We must build oppositional community. We must ask each other what your vision for society, what is your vision for society, and help each other to think outside of the norm, something that William and Mary students are no stranger to doing. My African ancestors rooted their idea of community in the concept of Ubuntu, 
recognizing that I am because you are, and you are because I am. The basic societal organizing unit toward a new humanity and world is our human family, not the individual. The enlightened idea of individualism has led to the near destruction of the world and one dominant form of humanity. And in the spirit of Fannie Lou Hamer, until all of us have access to safety and humanity, then none of us are safe and human. That is the type of oppositional thinking and being that is necessary. If humanity means anything at all, it means saying yes to life and being open to new modes of living and being. A new world is possible, and every person has a role in making it a reality. Every person, all of you here today, possesses a vision of a new world and humanity. We will disagree. It will be challenging, but life is a struggle. In those times of despair and hopelessness, remember that we can do this. We can listen to the sound of the genuine. We can do the work that our souls must have and we can work collectively, even if oppositionally, to transform the world and humanity. Graduates, you have a vision. You have the creativity. You have the William and Mary education. And you have your family, a family of alumni, myself among them, cheering you on. Thank you, and Godspeed. We will now read the names of our degree candidates, beginning with our graduate students and concluding with our undergraduates. Please hold your applause until all candidates for each degree group have been recognized. Would the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy please come forward to be recognized? And if we have any Doctor of Education candidates, please join as well. Doctor of Philosophy, Zhao Wei Chang. You can yeah, absolutely. Photos are definitely allowed. This is a more chill event, so yes, please come. If families come at the right time and take pictures, by all means. And joining us virtually, earning a Doctor of Philosophy, Mary Rooney. With the candidates for master's degrees, including arts and sciences, business, education, law, and marine science, please come forward to be recognized. Master of Accounting, Noah Ronan Levine. Master of Accounting, Amy Marie Everett. Master of Accounting, Zhile Cheng. <laughs> Master of Laws, Saira Arzu Gonzalez. <laughs> Master of Business Administration, Megan Dollar Palumbo. Yeah. <laughs> Master of Business Administration, Elise Marie Omen. Master of Business Administration, Rebecca Allison Murray. <laughs> Master of Education, Sandra Emo. Master of Education, Ivana Michelle Marshall. Master of Education, Madison Rose Saul. Master of Science and Business Analytics, Maham Sarob. Best 
Master of Business Administration, Jonah Paul Balser Goldwater. Master of Laws, Hang Chi. Master of Laws, Yumin Chang. Master of Laws, Ching Chang. Master of Laws, Peng Lil Yo. <clears throat> Master of Laws, Jia Hong Sun. And joining us virtually, Master of Science and Business Analytics, Doug Andrade. Master of Business Administration, Heather Elaine Caldwell. Master of Science and Finance, Joseph Ferraro. Master of Business Administration, Amy Marie Flynn. Master of Science and Business Analytics, Nashad Juman. Master of Business Administration, Adrian Knight. Master of Business Administration, Christina Marie Samante. Master of Education, Hannah Marie Smith. And Master of Business Administration, Karen Wynn Tran. Congratulations to our master's degree candidates. Would candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration please come forward? Andrew Scott Protiva. Andrew, congratulations. Andrew Galvin Bors. Benjamin Grant Simon. Sydney Nicole Doyon. Nicholas Robert Gall. Ella Marie Colbert. Gabriel Julian Parker. Gabriel, and joining us virtually, Sohail Mohanty. Congratulations to all of our Bachelor of Business Administration degree candidates. Would the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please come forward to be recognized? Here they come. <laughs> With a major in global studies, Amaya Mahogany Moxon. With a major in government, Samuel Reeves Spey. Right, Samuel, congratulations. With majors in economics and history, Mark Trotta. Mark, congratulations. 
with a major in government, Amanda Rose Merkin. With majors in economics and history, Joshua Martin Link. With a major in English, Caitlin Marie Sho Shang. With a major in English, Adelaide Yvonne Norman. With a major in Film and Media Studies, Eric Jacob Wells. With a major in History, Tan Vo. With majors in English and a self-designed major, Julia Jordan Labor. With a major in government, Lydia Catherine Heckmansick. With majors in government and philosophy, Taylor Madison Jury. Invite people to put their hands up if they have the camera. Then we'll know where to face. If you have a camera, please put your hand up so we know where to turn. With a major in environmental science and policy, as well as kinesiology and health sciences, Lila Powell. <laughs> With majors in gender, sexuality, and women's studies, and environmental science and policy, Bibiana Morones. With a major in art and art history, Sandra Caitlin Kelso. Sandra, congratulations. <laughs> With a major in government, Salima Salimada Sanfo. With a major in government, Zechariah Andrew Saderup. <laughs> With majors in government and gender, sexuality, and women's studies, Gail Conk. With a major in international relations, Caroline Page Olson. With majors in history and Chinese language and culture, Emma Justine Kosterlitz Burry. With majors in international relations and economics, Yilin Dong. With a major in international relations, Nancy Lang. With majors in economics and international relations, Miao Lu. With majors in economics and environmental science and policy, Mackenzie Patricia Grady. With majors in psychology and French and francophone studies, Anta Hazel Gay. <laughs> With a major in linguistics, Deja Sharon Robinson.
with majors in government and economics. Cormac Michael Masters. With a major in government, Madeline Elizabeth Dunn. With a major in history, Alexander Sergio Montano. With a major in government, Caroline Grace Kachadorian. With a major in Chinese language and culture, Adam Nicholas Moore. With a major in government, Kiran Parikh Mangala. With a major in music, Theodore Lewis Nicholas Gernhardt. With a major in film and media studies, Carter Bunting. With a major in Hispanic studies, Noelia Iman Azim. With a major in psychology, Claire Noreen Leak. With a major in government, Melissa Chibuta Mukuna. Chibula, excuse me. Let me try that again. Melissa Chibula Mukuna. Yes, thank you. With a major in history, Eleanor K. Antistenis. With a major in government, Anderson Smith Barr. <laughs> With a major in Hispanic studies, Emma Pride Melvin. <laughs> With a major in international relations, Annalise Catherine Shader. With majors in philosophy and religious studies, Tanya Rounds. With majors in global studies and business, Nanthini Nalamotu. With a major in economics, Olivia Hay. Hedinger. <laughs> With a major in international relations, Georgette Teresa McKee. With a major in sociology, Catherine Rose Brazy. With a major in government, Tatiana Camille Castillon. With majors in economics and mathematics, Zhurong Mu. And joining us virtually with a major in global studies, Mira Yasmin Carlin, with a major in sociology, Sydney Taylor Crespo. 
with a major in government, Connor Walsh Darby, with a major in English, Emma Matsumoto Grenfell, with a major in global studies, Zachary Michael Price, and with majors in international relations and English, Philip Jeffrey Schuler. Congratulations to our Bachelor of Arts degree candidates. And now would the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please come forward to be recognized. With a major in psychology, April Michelle Sage. With a self-designed major, Zoe Kelly Marie Waring. With a major in physics, Jonathan Rivera. <clears throat> With a major in biology, Justin Edward Sherlock. With a major in biology, Sydney Elizabeth Lenz. With majors in kinesiology and health sciences and public policy, Catherine Rose Brady. With a major in biology, Sachi Kalra. Yay! With a major in biology, Anna Carolina Valverde. Anna. With a major in chemistry, Taylee Barbara Shackleton. With a major in psychology, Matthew Braden Sirotti. <laughs> With a major in chemistry, Andrew James Beck. <clears throat> With a major in computer science, Ji Song Yu. With a major in mathematics, Holly K. Stefanik. With majors in chemistry and computer science, Ignat Andreevich Miyakov. With majors in com computations and applied mathematics and statistics and environmental science and policy, Sebastian Oscar Rios Melian. With majors in computer science and philosophy, Connor Sexton O'Brien. With a major in physics, Hersan Gonzalez Hernandez. With a major in psychology, Yusra Osman Mohammed. With a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Zachary Harrison Baco. With a major in mathematics, Noelle Kayla Simpson. 
<clears throat> With a major in biology, Brooke Allison Meeks. With a major in biology, Rose Lynn Zhang. With a major in neuroscience, Matthew Kim. With a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Catherine Grace Malensky. With a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Kenneth Weekang Tu. With a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Arusha Binte Urif. With a major in biology, Rhea Garg. With a major in biology, Chuck Lin. With a major in computer science, Matthew Alexander Reed. With a major in mathematics, Benjamin Clark Bowles. With majors in computer science and data science, David Shane Huang. With a major in biology, Batil Abu Anjil. With a major in chemistry, Alexander Clark Williard. With a major in biology, Kevin Andrew Carlisle. With majors in computer science and economics, Zhang Ichuan. <laughs> With majors in mathematics and economics, Yiran Li. With a major in neuroscience, Emmy Francis Jacoya. With a major in chemistry, Willow Lee Sloan. With a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Kate Elizabeth Murphy. With a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Natasha M. Goldstein. With majors in geology and history, Morgan Lynn Sanders. With a major in psychology, Marina Pantner.
with a major in psychology, Jaden Corin Anderson. With a major in biology, Daniel Joseph Mars. With a major in mathematics, Megan Elizabeth McFarland. With a major in neuroscience, Isabel Therese Kellner. With a major in computations and applied mathematics and statistics, Xiaoyu Zhou. With a self-designed major in global sustainability and conservation, Ife Her. With a major in psychology, Maria Dimitro Dimitrova Georgieva. And joining us virtually, with a major in kinesiology and health sciences, Emmy Sophia McCreary. With a major in biology, Kenan Okada. With a major in neuroscience, Warisha Saheed. And with a major in neuroscience, Zong Yang Yu. Congratulations to our <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree candidates. And all of our degree candidates that are finishing degrees this winter, congratulations from all of us. It is now my pleasure to introduce Matthew Brandon, the Chief Executive Officer of the William & Mary Alumni Association and Associate Vice President of alumni engagement. Matt, will you please join us up here? Good morning. It is an honor to be with you all today. I want to first thank Ginger for the kind introduction. I'd also like to acknowledge any alumni who are here to support, uh, any alums who are here to support our graduates today. Uh, thank you for being with us. Welcome home. I would like to let you know that I'm a proud member of the class of 1992, and as I practiced uh, my notes for today, I realized what a gap there is between 92 and 22. <laughs> and it gave me a moment of pause, but I decided to stick with the script. So I am class of 1992. Delighted to be the first person to officially welcome you all to the Alumni Association. In just a few moments, I'm going to formally induct you into the association by asking you to join me in reciting the Alumni Creed as you figuratively step across the threshold from student to alum, you're joining a remarkable and invaluable network of more than 100,000 former students. We are in every corner of the globe. We are leaders in businesses, institutions, and communities. You are now part of the alumni family that stands ready to serve you, to support you, to care for you, and to cheer for you. I invite you to share their commitment and their confidence in the promise you bring to this world. You are now part of a proud legacy that includes U.S. presidents and congresspeople, scientists and inventors, pastors and teachers, actors, athletes, and leaders in business and public service. You are an indelible source of pride for William & Mary. 
There are many benefits that you can now enjoy for the rest of your life as a member of the Alumni Association. I'll just list a few. You can join your local alumni regional network. It allows you to seek out other alumni in your community. You can wear your green and gold proudly and return to campus often, including for homecoming and reunions. Make it a point to be involved in the Young Guard. It's an alumni group specially for recent graduates. And don't hesitate to use your William & Mary contacts for career networking, for friendship, and for fellowship. And one day, pay it forward by hiring William & Mary alumni for internships, for jobs, externships, shadowing, help your degree grow in value by helping other William & Mary alumni. Importantly, please keep in touch with us online and come visit. We have a beautiful new alumni center, it's right there. <laughs> please come see us, there's a lot of space. It needs to be filled with you all, so come see us. As time goes by, you'll come to realize that in William & Mary is not just where you went, it is who you are. All right then. Now for an important moment of ritual. When you entered, there was an alumni pen on your seat. If you'll grab that pen, we're going to recite the alumni creed together. Then you will affix your pen to your left lapel or the left side of your clothing over your heart. This pen should be a constant reminder that you are a member of a special tribe family forever. So wear it with pride. So graduates, if you would at this moment, please stand with me and join as we recite the creed. You'll find it on the back of your program because I know no one has memorized it. <laughs> Mostly because you've never seen it. I'll start and then you'll join in with me and we'll do this and you will have your alumni pins and you will then officially be welcomed into the alumni body of the College of William and Mary. I'm sorry, of William and Mary. As a graduate of William and Mary, and as a new member of the William & Mary Alumni Association, I pledge to uphold the university's values, belonging, curiosity, excellence, flourishing, integrity, respect, and service. With pride, I will support and cherish the idea of William & Mary, encouraging others to do so as well. No matter how far from Williamsburg life takes me. That's it. You're in. Please feel free to be seated, and I have one more announcement. I want to welcome you to the Alumni Association and to your first alumni event. Following this graduation ceremony, I want to ask each of you, with your guest, to join us for a reception downstairs in the atrium. Welcome to the Alumni Association. Enjoy the event, and go Tribe. That's it. <laughs> the world is yours.